All right, so I just got in, as you can see, to the closed beta of Gwent, the Witcher card game. Uh, so I'm coming into this very cold. I have not played it before at all. First experience, you're seeing it with me as I go through it. I'm just going to go ahead and throw out my thoughts as I experience it. I pr should probably give a little bit of background here uh, in that I have played all the way through The Witcher 3, and I enjoyed Gwent in, the, in that game quite a lot. I also play a fair amount of Hearthstone, and I play in uh, the Elder Scrolls Legends, uh, also in beta right now. So I have some experience with card games, and I used to be a tournament magic player as well. So I, I kind of have that background. But this is my very first experience with Gwent. So I'm just going to, you know, share my thoughts as we go through it. Signing in here, I know that it's already signed up with my uh, email. And we'll see what we've got. Um, I ignored the tutorial the first time I launched to make sure everything was working, but we're going to do that now. And again, this is closed beta. Everything is likely to change. You can see I've got absolutely nothing of whatever this stuff is up here in the upper right corner. Um, I don't even know what cards. We've got shop. We've got options. You don't want to see all that right now, right? You're coming in cold with me, so let's go right to the tutorial and learn about Gwent um, and see how it may differ from what we played in The Witcher 3. There's Dijkstra, who actually I really liked his character in The Witcher 3. Welcome to Gwent. This tutorial will help you get started and you'll get some free cards. All right, free cards once you complete it. If you're in a hurry, you can skip it by pressing escape, which is what I did when I first launched the game, and return to it later from the main menu. Yep, I launched it once to make sure it ran, and then I exited out. Gwent is a game where two armies lock in mortal struggle on the field of battle. The goal is to win two rounds against your opponent. This is one of the things that I do like about Gwent's design, is that you've got the best of three going on, and it encourages you to think strategically uh, kind of for the long haul. across the It makes me wonder how other games like uh, Hearthstone might play if you did best of three. Of course, you wouldn't be pulling from uh, the same deck. Or he wouldn't, you know, Gwent's designed to play best of three rounds. But uh, I, I like that. I think that's a cool strategic way to think, because sometimes you'll bluff your way through a round and then deliberately lose it, that sort of thing. Which, uh, there's not much bluffing that happens in, in games like Hearthstone, which is disappointing, because I think that's fun. Uh, these crowns show your progress towards victory. The top crown is your opponent's, the bottom is yours. You get half a crown each time you win a round, get both halves, and you win the game. So basically you're trying to win a full crown, all right? This is the total strength of your army. Whoever has the more total strength at the end of the round wins and gets half a crown. Okay, just like Gwent in the card game. As you can see, some cards have already been placed on the battlefield. These are units. Hello, units. And we've got an animated one there. Placing them on the battlefield increases your total strength. So your total is here and here. So far, so normal. Each player can only play one card per turn. Once this is done, it is the other player's turn. Your opponent will play first this match. Okay. Each unit has an assigned position determining which row it can be placed on. For example, the Fiend can only be placed on the melee row. Okay. The Vran Warrior card can only be placed on the ranged row. Yep, so we've got the little arrow crossbow thing there. And the Griffin card can only be placed on the siege row. So way in the back. You can tell which row card can be played on by looking at the icons on the left side of the card. So we've got the little crossbow, the little sword for melee, and we've got our strength. Oh look, I've got Geralt already. How cool am I? You'd think this might be a tutorial or something. Alright, play the Geralt card now. To do so, highlight it and double press, or use your left mouse button to drag and drop it on the battlefield. So we'll drag and drop. Look at that, it highlights where to go, and boom. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. You have played Geralt and his strength has been added to your total. This means your total strength is now higher than your opponent's. That's because I'm pretty badass. I can win tutorials. Play your remaining cards in any order. Alright. So, let's see what we've got. 28. It looks like it highlights whoever's ahead. Monster Horde, Wild Beast, whatever that means. Geralt, Legendary Monster Slayer. It must be me. It looks like the coin indicates whose turn it is. Over here, hold to pass. All right, uh, there's your graveyard, which this is nice. Uh, I wish more cards let you look into your graveyard. You can't do this at all in Hearthstone. That's why there are those deck tracking um, uh, programs that you can overlay to find out what you've already played. I don't know why they, they disallow that. It seems like something should be standard to me. Uh, and then here's your deck. Card count, I've got 18 left. Add two strength to each gold unit when it appears on your side. 
Whatever that means. I don't even know what that means. Okay. Let's play something. How about Redanian Knight? No ability. He's got an 8 strength. Take this, tough Long guy. Live, etc., etc. Yep, looks like looks like they kind of set this up, so it's going to be, you know, close with 33, they're at 35. There's not a lot of choices to be made in the tutorial. Dunbanner, Light Cavalry, into the ranged row. Alert! To arms! They passed, I passed. I won the round! Wow, amazing! Did you guys see that? I'm pretty badass. I won the first round of tutorial by dropping the cards they gave me. All right, congrats, your total strength is higher than your opponent's. Me, you've won your first battle! Yes, I have. Yes, I have. In this game, you'll learn about advanced card mechanics and round dynamics. Sounds cool. All right. Continue. -y. All battles start with a mulligan. During this phase, you can swap up to three cards, and you don't you don't want your hand during the next battle for new cards drawn from your deck. So far, so normal. Let's start by swapping out the decoy, commander's horn, and clear skies card. So do this, highlight each card, and, and left click or press enter. All right, so decoy. Yeah. Vernon Roche, he's pretty badass. Commander's horn, see ya. Clear skies. Later. Look at that. Nice animated Geralt over there. A good strategy is to open around by playing a strong card. This way your opponent will have to play a high strength card to match your totals. Play the Geralt card now. Alright, well they're gonna tell me how they think I should play, but once I learn it, I might have my own ways. Mm, I hate portals. Oh. Geralt, man, you're just kind of salty. Your opponent is about to play a card that musters more cards to the battlefield. This means all copies of this card in your opponent's deck will instantly appear on the battlefield. Alright, Muster was also in Witcher 3 and their version of Gwent. And they played out a bunch of these scary looking plant-like things. I forgot what those are called. Uh, some units can deal damage to other units, reducing their strength. Alright, that seems to be a new ability. I don't think that was in the Witcher 3 game. Play the Vernon Roche card now and choose which enemy unit to damage. Alright, so it says remove 5 strength from any opposing enemy unit. Looks like I don't have a lot of choice, or they're it's all going to be the same anyway. You know, uh, left, medium, right, it's got to be the middle guy. Die, middle guy. If you reduce a unit strength to zero, it is destroyed, sending it to the graveyard. Alright, so this, this dishing damage back and forth across the line was not in the, uh, the original game there. So that, that's probably going to change dynamics. Play your remaining cards in any order. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem to me like there's too much going on with abilities here. So we'll just kind of play them aye, aye, sir. out in order here. Your opponent's about to play a special card, Scorch. This card destroys the strongest units on the battlefield. Scorch. Oh, see ya. As you can see, Scorch did not affect Geralt or Vernon Roche. That's because these are gold cards. See the little gold border? Gold cards are immune to most card abilities. You can recognize them by their gold borders. This would be a good time to pass. Your opponent will need to play many cards to eliminate that lead. If that happens, you will have a card advantage and be well positioned to win the remaining rounds. All right, so that's good. They're teaching about this three rounds to win thing. So it's not important that I win every round. I can throw this first round because I've got 19, he's got 13, he'll have to play more cards, which leaves me more cards for successive rounds. Which is what this thing says, remember losing a round does not mean you've lost the battle, you'll need to win two out of the three rounds. Roger. Pass by highlighting the coin and clicking and holding or pressing and holding space. Once you pass, you can't play any more cards this round, so that basically you, you forfeit any more plays, but your opponent continue to play as many as they want. Alright, well, it told me to pass, and I do what the tutorial says. So now it's gonna win the round. You lost the round! Starting round two. We now start another round. Your opponent won the previous round, so they start. At the start of the second round, both players draw two cards from their deck. Okay, that's a difference from Gwent and The Witcher 3. That you draw between rounds looks like automatically and for all players. It used to be that, like, uh, with the Northern Realms, you'd only draw if you won the round. So they've, they've changed the rules there. As you can see, you've got a significant lead over your opponent. 
they only have a few cards left while you have many. Continue playing and defeat your opponent. Yet one of the things I did like about Gwent was how important card advantage was. You had to think about every unit you played. Uh, one of the drawbacks to a game like Hearthstone is once you play for a little while, uh, it just feels like you're looking to top deck, at least to me it does quite often. And so card advantage, although important, doesn't play as major of a role. You don't, you don't think ahead like that, like what you're going to do in subsequent plays. Oh, what did I pull up? Whoever this is, Soleil de Tansarville, or however you say her name, Sile, who knows. Remove four strength from an opposing non-gold unit, so kind of like Vernon Roach, looks like I do damage, and then just some no-ability cards that... Oh look, Ballista, remove two strength from an opposing non-gold unit. Well, I'm kind of a jerk, let's do that. You, you're non-gold, right? Smack. Smack. Alert to arms! All right, so we're just playing stuff out here quickly, seeing what we can do. One, One in each row. Et cetera, et cetera. The opponent has passed, so you have now more total strength. Your opponent who has just passed. There's no point playing any more cards. Remember, you must have some cards left to play in the last round. Pass now to win the round. Highlight and all right. Yep, yep, yep. We got gotcha. you. Pretty, pretty decent tutorial here. Uh, I've noticed how it's highlighting things. So for a closed beta, that's nice. See how, see how it's got this little glow, this lit up spot here. I bet they're using an engine here that has some sort of lighting effects or ability with their UI at least to control uh, what things are highlighted. That that probably will come in handy as far as regular gameplay. I'll let you pay attention to things. All right, begin the third round. That means both you and your opponent draw one card. So I drew two last round, one card this time. Each of you has half a crown, so whoever wins this round wins the game. Continue playing and defeat your opponent. So he draws one, I draw one. I have a lot more cards than he does. Well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five there, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have two more than he does. Uh, I'll start with my Redanian Knight. Long live, etc., etc. He plays his lizard looking dude, the Fran Warrior. Let's see, blue stripes. Add two strength for all your other blue stripes commandos wherever they are. Well, I'll play that anyway, even though I don't see any you other blue stripes in play. Here. I saw a little glow down here. Maybe it affected the ones in the deck. I don't know. Uh, Alright, so I'm 13. He is 15. We'll play out this guy. <laughs> Fine. My opponent passed. Now, why would he pass and still have cards left? Because he's an idiot? I don't know. You now have more total strength than your opponent. You can play your money cards or pass. Either way, you'll win the round because your opponent has passed and cannot in increase their strength. Well, okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pass. I'm first gonna shoot somebody because I want to overkill. I'm, I'm clicking this multiple times there. So right, now I'll pass. I won the round and got a full crown. And there's your summary screen. Geralt of the Northern Realms. Pretty awesome there. Showing you how you won. And the color here indicates who won. So red versus blue. Victory continue. Nice artwork. Uh, interface feels pretty crisp and clean. Feels feels good. A little, uh... Any lost words? Crush those vermin! Oh, now we're learning about our commander cards which is kind of like your class in Hearthstone. Um, use what you've learned in the previous match and swap out cards you don't want to use in this battle. When you are satisfied with your cards, press Escape to start the game. Okay. So it's only given me these five to draw. All right, we don't want poor infantry. Looks like they changed the name of that. Used to have a dirty word. Oh, I got Geralt! I'm pretty amazing. We don't want that poor infantry either. Yeah, of course not. And this has no ability, the Ballista. Really, because it's five and then remove two, I'd say these are roughly equivalent. Although removing two feels like it may be stronger than this, just because I could probably eliminate a unit that might grow in some way. So, you go away. And I got something else cool. I don't know if there were more cards, actually, that I could have scrolled through. Oh well. In this game, you'll learn how to use leaders, but let's start by playing a unit. Okay. 
Oh, and it's telling me which one to play here. So, I think I will do that then. Long live, etc., etc. You shall die, worm. Your opponent has used his leader with the big scary voice. Leaders can only be used once per game. Using a leader ends your turn, just like playing a card. Alright. To use your leader's ability, drag your leader card onto the battlefield. Uh huh. And uh, using a left click, press X or highlight your leader card and press enter. Do that now. So I'll just drag him onto the battlefield. I don't even know what he does. What does my leader do? Mr. Full Test, huh? So I right clicked. Okay. Spawn an exact copy. Excuse me. Spend an exact copy of a bronze unit on your side. Okay. Press those burning. I see. Your opponent is about to play a weather card. These cards reduce the strength of all units on a row to a minimum. They affect both sides of the battlefield, meaning both you and your opponent will feel their consequences. Alright, so you bring weather into the battlefield. Very much like. Alright, so he played that frost card, which hit the melee row. Weather cards are usually used when your opponent has significantly more strength than you on a specific row. Remember, like most cards, they do not affect gold units such as Geralt. <laughs> Maybe that's a hint. You can remove the negative effects of weather cards by playing the Clear Skies card, which was just added to your hand. Strangely enough, it's like a tutorial. Do that now. Yeah, what do you think of that, scary voiced Aridin? Play your remaining cards in any order. So oh, let's see, it's highlighting as I come over. <laughs> Wait a minute. Not in any order, it's telling me to do the commander's horn. Commander's horn card's just been added to your hand, and you can now place it on any row to double the strength of all non gold units that row. Place the commander's horn card now. Alright, so it doesn't actually, you know, I'm, I'm seeing if it would let me put it somewhere else, but it doesn't, so we'll put it there. That's interesting. It doubled the effects, but then it went to the graveyard rather than sticking around. Uh, like off to the side or something. It just looks like it's a, a one-time effect. So you can see you now have a significant lead of your opponent. You can now pass and win the round. Pass by holding space. Or doing that. I won the round. Smash. So I guess he had passed, huh? I draw my two. Decoy and clear skies. Your turn. You now know the basics. Continue playing to find out more about the game, the tactics you can set in motion, and the foes you will face. With each battle, you'll gain experience and hone your skills. Use that knowledge to bring your enemies to their knees. Good luck and have fun. Alrighty. Well, I've already done full test thing. Uh, this guy has no ability. We'll play him out. For so I have my uh, half crown already. So I can throw this and still win the uh, win the game. I can throw this around if I want. Uh, so we'll kind of plan on doing that sort of thing. A decoy, return a non-gold unit on your side to your hand. So it can be kind of sneaky with that, right? For So I want to I want to push him into playing Damn it. a lot of cards. Damn it, Geralt! <laughs> Rain. Oh, good play, buddy. Nobody's uh nobody's on the siege row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It'd be cool. Oh, it does tell me. Look right here. Seven. How many cards down here? Eight. How many cards? Very nice. So I don't have to count. I can just look. Uh, so I have one more card than he does. If I pass, he'll have to play to win the round. Um, so let's do that. Force him to play out a few more cards so I get larger card advantage. Yeah, he has no choice because if he loses this round, he loses the game. He just has to keep playing cards. There he goes. Now we're tied. Don't know what happens with the tie. Maybe we'll find out. It's got a little highlight to show me what card he's hovering over. So now he's 29, 28. He wins that round. But that was by a cunning strategy there. 
each draw one card, but now I have nine cards, he's got three, so he's in world of hurt here. He played out a Chort, I play out my Vernon Roche guy, nail his Chort, so I, when I single click it's not doing it. So uh, just, just a little bit of the interface there that it kind of feels like I should do that upon single click, but maybe I have to click once to target and second to activate or something. All right, so head 11 to seven, play this guy out. Nice mess you've got here. All right, so he's a blue stripes commando. This guy says he's for the blue stripes, but I didn't see any increase. So I was just seeing if that would work. Apparently not. Let's go ahead and play out my little ballista. So that guy looks silver. <laughs> we'll gang up on that thing. Take it right out of the game, why not? All right, he's out of cards, so I'm 22, he's 14, I win. Wow, this tutorial seems like it's really easy. <laughs> you've completed the tutorial. Now that you've mastered the basics, you're ready to test your medal against other players. Good luck and have fun. GLHF. Do you want to play the deck builder tutorial? Of course we do, because this is a first look. Let's find out. Welcome to the main menu. Thank you. From here, you can access all the different areas of the game. In the next tutorial, you'll learn how the deck builder works. Highlight the deck builder button and click or left click or press enter to continue. All right, deck builder. Create and tweak your decks. It's got a pretty fast load screen. It just blows right by. Uh, I am playing off a solid state drive though. Welcome to the deck builder tutorial. Here you can put together new decks or modify existing decks by adding or removing cards. Highlight the new deck button right there and left click. Cards in Gwent are divided into factions. Each faction has unique cards which only it can use. Pick a faction and left click or press enter to continue. So I've got Monsters Northern Realms, Scoia'tael. Are there others? Oh, okay, so I was interested. So uh, you can wheel here. I'm mouse wheeling. Nilfgaard coming soon. Skellige. Okay. Um, yeah, so they, they should probably include something on here when you can go left and right from an interface standpoint, because I have a feeling that in my uh, initial card draws, I didn't realize that. There's no arrows anywhere, you'll notice, to tell you. So there's a, there's a small interface design that I think they should take into account. All right, so monsters, what are their abilities? Keep an, a random, non-gold, neutral, or monsters card on your side at the end of each round. Uh, just my own personal preference as a game developer, game designer, is I don't like using randomness wherever possible. Uh, I think it, it takes away from player skills, but I've made videos on that before. Anyway, Northern Realms add two strength to each gold unit when it appears on your side. Two strength to each gold unit when it appears on your side. So that means all your gold units are stronger, it sounds like, with Northern Realms. Squatel, choose who begins one round per game. That sounds a little weak to me, but who knows? Have to play and find out, right? Skellige, at the end of each turn, add one to the base strength of every non-gold unit in your hand, deck, and graveyard. That one immediately sounds to me like it's got some sort of strategy that you could uh, develop around that. End of each round, so it sounds like you'd want to play out rounds and grow your grow your overall strength. Probably starts out weak, gets stronger over time. So that's, that's kind of a cool thing. Who knows what Nilfgaard does in the in, in Gwent in The Witcher 3. It was kind of a spy-based sort of deck. Um, all right. Let's go Skellige, because that sounds interesting to me. Croc on Crate. Spawn two clan on Crate Warrior units, says his special ability. Pretty cool. And it says, highlight the leader you want to use this deck. It's the only one I've got. Look at how nice looking these cards are. They've, uh, they've got some really nice little high quality artwork up here uh, the, the logo the like bear claws hanging there so it's, it's got some nice interface here as far as just looking uh, appealing okay I will accept that was a quick load screen this is your card collection here are all the cards you've collected are shown here interesting they're all along the bottom huh 
You can use the card filter to display only specific types of cards. This is your deck. You can add cards from your collection or move cards you don't want back to your collection. All right. Now let's add a card from your collection to your deck. Do so by dragging a card to your deck or highlighting a card and pressing enter. Oh, and it's telling me which one to do. Alzer's Thunder special removes six strength from one non-gold unit. Okay. Oh, these are... All right, so we've got four rows here in the deck builder. Melee, ranged, siege, and then this must be actions or specials down here. Speed things up. This time, we'll fill out the remainder of the deck for you. Well, thank you. Usually, though, you'll choose all the cards in the deck for yourself. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm amazing. That was fast. Now let's remove a card from your deck to do so. Drag a card from your deck to your collection or highlight a card and press enter. So it's telling me, oh wait, I don't really want Biting Frost. So we'll pull it back. I wonder if I can just click or double click on it. Yep, single click will send it back. This is the card counter. It helps you construct a valid deck and shows you the deck limitations. Ah, okay, so deck limitations can have up to four gold cards, six silver cards, and it looks like as many bronze as you want. You need a minimum of 25 and a max of 40. So there's your deck creation uh, restrictions. And of course you want to play as low as possible to the minimum, exactly 25 in nearly all cases to minimize the randomness of what you draw. Because randomness is bad in skill-based games. And I think the guys who make these card games should take that more into account. Ben Brode. Hearthstone, looking in your direction. Less randomness, please. Now that you've constructed a valid deck, press Escape to leave the screen and save your deck. Or maybe I can click the button that says Save and Exit. Let's do that. Tutorial complete! That's amazing. This covers all the deck builder basics. Feel free to experiment with different cards and decks. Remember, you can always come back and modify any of your decks. Press Escape to leave, or we'll just click Exit. Oh, we've got starter decks here that looks like they're ready to go. Ready to play, card count 25 tells you that sort of stuff. Nice, nice, nice. Do you have to play the shop tutorial? You bet I do. I'm so about tutorials today. The next tutorial will explain how the shop works. Highlight the shop button and click left click or press enter to continue. Purchase kegs of cards. We've got a troll here up front. Stuff on his back. Some nice artwork. I Got some really pretty artwork here. Human in shop, soup in shop. Okay, welcome to the shop. Here you can buy various in-game items. Most Should importantly, new cards. On rocks, maybe. Okay. You obtain new cards by buying kegs and opening them. They say he's not animated, but he's got some voice. Uh, loops going on here, I guess, to make it a little more appealing. Music change too. Pokey rock, pokey rock. This guy's either going to be funny or annoying. Uh, okay, you've already got one keg. I do. Thank you. Open it to see what's inside. So up here, we've got yeah. one keg. <laughs> to do so, press space. Human soup, soup, eat. Yum, yum. Oh, it says down here at the bottom, open keg. So straight, it's pointing up here to show me what I've got, but down here is the button that says open keg. It's a little bit, a little bit strange, but uh, you know, it's tutorial, okay. Open keg. Do you want to open a card keg? Ah, uh, yeah. Kaboom, so that's how you open it, it looks like you're shown four cards, so it gives you four. It came in your keg. Flip them over to see what you got. Highlight each card in a turn and click reveal card. So four is what you get. Let's see. So in uh, Elder Scrolls Legends, it gives you six. And in Hearthstone, it gives you five. So Gwent, you're only giving me four. Seems like, you know, you guys uh, might want to up your game. We'll see, though. All right. I'd like to uh, reveal my card now. I'm clicking it multiple times. You can probably hear that. Nice. Reinforce Ballista. Wow. Necker. <laughs> the voice of the troll is kind of fun. Ah. 
because it doesn't open on first click. That's a little strange. Goodie. Sometimes, I don't know. Light Longship, immune to rain, biting frost, and strength all no good. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So cards. Oh, once you've revealed all four, you'll be able to choose your fifth card. That's kind of hidden there. So it looks like they do give you five. Now for more. Ah, clever, clever, clever. Now it lets you pick. I should choose one of three. The card you choose will go to your collection. The others will be destroyed. To make your choice, highlight a card and then click enter. All right, so I like the Skellige mechanics. So I can see with the purple that that's Skellige. This is Monsters and this is Scoia'tael, right? So don't know much else about the game, so we're playing blind, but uh, we'll go Skellige right now. Although some of these look cool. Immune Terrain, Spawn Rain, two strength. Whenever a unit on your side is destroyed or discarded. Wow, cool. Gain three strength whenever a special card is played. Wow, all these look like they have some cool synergies going on, which is which is nice. I think uh, that's a good way to have lots of variety in decks, is making sure there's lots of card synergies possible and not just a lot of uh, boring cards that, that do nothing. Confirm your choice. Before I go on, does this... They're all the same rarity, too, it looks like. I'm, I'm guessing this blue has kind of become standard as a rare card, right? It's the same thing, same color in both Hearthstone and in Elder Scrolls Legends. So we'll assume they're all rare. My new cards! Congratulations! I also got the level up sound, or the quest completed sound from Witcher 3. Can add the deck builder at any point using your decks. Press escape to return to the shop. I'll press continue, which is probably the same thing. Congrats, you finished the tutorial. You, now you can play games against other players. If you're using pre-made decks or ones, you build yourself the deck builder. Good luck and have fun. So, um, play I have casual match, friend match, practice. Good, they have AI. That's, that's always nice, especially when you're learning the game. But as a first look, let's let's do one practice round and then we'll wrap up this first look video here. I think we've probably covered the, the basics. We'll do a practice though. And I'll do the deck that it built for me. I don't even know what's in it. Fast, fast load screens. Yeah, so there I'm, now I'm wheeling. It doesn't tell you though. Guys should uh should include something here that says down here, you know, scroll wheel or include arrows to go left or right, because right now it doesn't look like there's any way to scroll left and right other than with your mouse wheel. What was that little Oh when I when I scroll you get the little eyeball symbol, see that? Okay. What do I want to do? War cry, double strength of all weekends, Princess of Freya, Berserker. Really don't know what I'm in for. However, just playing it uh, from general principles here, I think too many specials is probably bad because I won't have enough things to put on the board. So let's get rid of one of the war cries. Lose two strength, as in he loses two strength? I don't know. This is uh, one of the things that's really different about Gwent is there is no casting cost for anything. Your casting cost is a turn. So, you know, playing things by turn is very important in uh, Gwent. Um, of course, I'm still learning about the official game, but that, that, was a, that was a cool design choice, something that I applaud them for trying. No mana to build up over time, no card costs. Of course, what that means is each slot is incredibly important because everything costs essentially the same. But we'll keep Scorch. Anything that blows stuff up is usually good. Commander's Horn, this, this doubles of all weakened non-gold units. Weakened non-gold units. Ah, so these things work together. It looks like this, you lose two strength and becomes weakened. This then doubles them. Interesting. Interesting synergy going here, it looks like. This one also is transferred to Young Bear if weakened, but not destroyed. I have another crayon on crate. Light long ship, immune to rain. Um, we're just gonna go with what we've got right here. Finish redrawing, looks like it's a right click, so. Okay. 
because I don't know what I'm doing. Turing machine. Clever. Intelligent golem. Uh, my turn. Hold to pass. I don't want to pass. I want to play out one of these things and see what happens. We'll greet a move at fire and iron. Anything in particular interest you? Regis, vampire. Does he have any abilities? When roof the battlefield, transform into Regis, higher vampire, and play. Uh, so he comes back stronger after he's removed from the battlefield. Interesting, eh? Resurrect a bronze non medic unit. So you can't chain medics, it looks like. Transform into Young Bear if weakened but not destroyed. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this guy out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to try and win round one here. Okay, so now uh, I'm 19, he's 18. I'm going to do this. Oh, look, this is, this is a clever little trick I can see happening already. So I've got a Scorch, which allows me to fry, you know, the highest cost cards. Well, these are all fives, right, because they're automatically weakened upon coming out. He's got two that are six, although the gold card, he looks like he's gold to me, uh, probably won't be affected, but I can fry this thing. Gain one strength, start a turn if on a row affected by fog. Breedable, whatever that means, lesser fire elements. Is, is this thing spitting things out? It does. Spawn one lesser fire elemental units at the start of your turn. So you get that thing out early and it keeps spitting those things out. Very interesting. I'm going to Scorch because I'm going to kill that. Uh, maybe a bad choice, but what the heck, we're learning. It breeds one out. Alright, so his ability was play Aridin, which is immune to frost, and 10. So he's got 23, I've got 19, but I want to use this Warcry thing, double strength of all weak and non cold units on your side, which I think will put me way over the top here. Fancy! Holy moly, what was that? Did you see that? Whatever he did, just made these things all up to fives? I don't even know what he did. Is there is there a history anywhere? Show me what he did. If there is, I don't see it. Maybe that was his last round. Thunderbolt potion, probably. I'm guessing. I'm, I'm trying to scroll and click. Yeah, so maybe it shows you what the last turn played was, but there's no history about what was prior. Um, I think that's good to have in games. Hearthstone does this. Uh, I think the Elder Scrolls Legends does it so that you can scroll back and see. But getting very close beta, maybe it'll add something in that will allow you to scroll through past turns. I, I, I think that's important in case you look away, and like I just did and didn't know what was going on. So you know what, what happened. Um, I'm going to play this round of win, so let's, let's play this guy out. Really crank those guys up. 68 to 37, what do you think of that? He's gonna pass and give me the round. Smart play, I would say. Crunch. All right. When randomly chosen, stays on. Lesser fire elemental. Stuck around. So I draw two, I drew a cow. Whatever the heck the cow does, what does a cow do? And everything just got bigger by one because that's the uh, the ability of Skellige, right? Prize winning cow, when removed from the battlefield, spawn one short unit. I'm, I'm gonna put it up there. So I'm using my turn here. Um, because, you know, turns are basically cards. You gotta decide what you wanna do there. So I'm, I'm really tempted to just blow this round. He's got seven. I've got six. So I've got one less card, but this thing's going to come back. And I've got my Priestess, which will allow me to resurrect. So I, I feel like uh, next round, he'll keep one of these on the board, though. The higher Vampire. Because now he's back and stronger, right? Let's, let's pass. Let's throw this around. And if I understand things right... I 
should be in pretty good position for round three. So he kept one. Wild Hunt Warrior, immune to frost. I drew a Lacerate, a special, removes three strengths from all, all non-gold units on a row. Oh, <laughs> which is just nasty for this row right there, isn't it? Uh, and I also got stronger too. And spawn fog and three rabid wolf units. So now my f my row with fog is the ranged row, right? Anything there? There's my short. I got just for the heck of it. Let's. Uh, well, if I stick around, he might play more melee units, so it'll impact more in the long run. I don't know what this guy uh, does for me. I don't even know if I can weaken. There's a little fire icon on here, which I'm not sure what that means. He's got a little fire one, too. Ouch. So he was weakened right there by the frost, which then turned him into a bear. And he's immune to frost. So that's that's cool. That's a, that's a cool little mechanic right there. So the frost actually made him stronger, although it greatly weakened my chore. Uh, so... It looks like weather effects, when they weaken, trigger these these abilities. It's starting to look to me like Skellige is going to be a, a deck that, or a, a, a class, whatever you want to call it. I'm not sure what we call these things. A group that uh, will play well in le in weather conditions, which kind of fits with their whole theme of being from the the islands that are covered in frost and torrential rains and that sort of stuff. Okay, so where I play that guy's ability, lacerate, immune to rain. Sure, that's the only thing else you could do, right? Let's play that out. I'm at 16. He's at 14. Bam! Killed my short. Feel a little scary now. We'll greet him with a fire and iron. Resistance is fusile. Ho <laughs> ho That's pretty awesome. Kicking my butt. Remove one strength and opposing non gold unit and gain two strength if that unit is destroyed. Wow. Wow, he's kicking my butt here. Uh, let's, Bow let's, before modern let's resurrect something. Two strength for each weakened unit on the battlefield. I'm guessing that's friend or foe. Everything else is crayon on crate warriors, right? And I'm wheeling, so that's my only choice. We'll grab the bear. Oh, why is he not immune to frost? That one is. This one's not. That's weird. Young bear is immune to frost. This one is not. That that seems odd to me. Um. Maybe you just have to learn that a regular bear is not immune to frost, but a young bear is. That, that feels like a little design choice that's confusing, especially to a new player like me. Um, transform into young bear if weakened, but not as... So does this does this impact me immediately? Come and get ya. Weakened, and then the transform. So yes, it does. Three strength from a non-gold unit. I promise you a quick death. I'll go there. And the idea here is I've been holding my last rate to just hopefully wipe a lot of this row out. And maybe uh, maybe make a big difference. So three strength from on non-gold units in a row. So here we go. Bam. How do you like me now? Look at that, my last rate. Saving that till the end will get me the victory. Sorry, Mr. Turing Machine, you got beat by a human intelligence. Good luck, though. Well done. Okay. Oh, there's the Skelligan starter deck. All right, well, I'm going to um, end this first look at Gwent here. We played through all the tutorials. I did one practice game. Uh, looks promising. I'm liking some of the synergies that I'm seeing kind of out of the gate, which is, uh, to me, one of the key things you want in a card, in a collectible card game, because uh, really that's what keeps the game fresh, is always finding new ways for cards to interact and new deck ideas. Uh, when you when you d 
devolve into like there's only one type of deck for each class that's really viable, then the game starts to get very stale very fast. Um, which is uh, one of the complaints I have about Hearthstone. It feels like it kind of degenerates most of the time into, you know, if you're playing a Hunter deck uh, on a given expansion, you end up playing pretty much the same Hunter deck minus, you know, three or four or five cards is all uh, as everybody else. And uh, and so when you, you know, when you play other Hunters, you already know what they're playing for the most part. And I, I think that's not very fun or very challenging. And the meta gets really kind of restricted just to the class you play and not so much about your own deck building or play skills. In my opinion, uh, that and also the, the increasing level of randomness that Hearthstone has had, hopefully less in the next expansion. Those are my two com main complaints about Hearthstone and why I'm hoping some of these new card games that are coming on the market um, will, will open up, create a little competition. Although Hearthstone's got a big lead now and it's a very charming, well done game. And I just think that some of the design is is not as robust as it could be. All right. Well, that's enough of that. Thank you for watching this first look. And I'll see you guys again soon. Game on.